Okay, before I start today's Retro Bat and Computers Link Setup Guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So, a little while back, a couple of people actually asked me to do a setup guide for Computers Links. I didn't know what Computers Links was up until researching for this video, so the Computers Links around the same sort of time as uh, Sinclair ZX Spectrum or ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, that type of era. Uh, during this era we got failed computers, microcomputers such as the Auric 1 and they failed because we had bigger computers, big known computers out there on the market at the time. Anyways, the Computers Links was technically better than the ZX Spectrum, for example. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that, but what we're going to do today is set you up as requested. So what are we going to need for this? We're going to need some games. Now, I've got .tap files just here. .taps are cassette images. We're also going to need some BIOS files. These are the ones I'm going to be using for this. So we got linksport8k.zip, links96k.zip, and we also got links128k.zip. Let's just put these BIOS files into the correct folder first. So right click on the RetroBat shortcut, open file location, BIOS folder, and in here, we're gonna just drag these inside. They don't need to be placed in the folder. Now, whilst I'm here, let me just tell you something. There's a couple of methods through RetroBat of emulating computers links. Inside of the emulators folder, we're gonna find a folder in here called Jinx. If we go inside the Jinx, we got some ROMs already placed in here and you need to make sure these are already inside which by default these were inside for me when I downloaded Retrobat. So these need to be in place just here so links 48-1.rom and all those .roms they're all going to support the Jinx emulator. Okay so next up what I was doing during researching for this video is me being me, I found out if it's actually got an active homebrew scene. So in other words, modern day games. And yes, it does. So the computer's links over on itch.io has got several fairly new titles. So I downloaded some of these and of course these are absolutely free to download. So the new games I got for this is Darkness, a game called Darkness there, and I've got Haunted and I've downloaded the English version of this. It seems to me that the computer's links has almost a French scene, a little bit like the Auric, Tangerine Auric computers. So we need to put these into the correct folder too. So RetroBat, open file location, ROMs, and in here we're gonna find camp links. And in here, we're gonna just drag our .tap games inside. Simple as that. Okay, let's open up RetroBat. Okay, so as we can see, we've now got computers links if you've done this correctly. Uh, so early 90s was a very good time for myself to be collecting old school computers of the 80s at car boot sales. One computer I didn't own or buy at a car boot sale was a computers links and this is literally because didn't sell too many unlike the ZX Spectrum or C64 or even Atari 8-bit computers. So if we go inside of here, here's our games. Now, it's quite unlikely we're gonna be able to scrape artwork, especially for the new releases such as Darkness and this Haunted game, but we can try. So press start button, main menu, down to scraper, scrape now. So we got the classic O oh Mummy game, which was also on several different micros of the 80s. Uh, so game settings, update, and yes, Okay, so just as I expected, Oh Mummy has got a cover for it. Doesn't appear to have a preview video. Anyways, if we press the select button on controller, advanced system options, emulator. Now, this is going to run from Jinx. We also got other options here to run the Lynx games, such as MAME64 in Libretro. But by leaving this to auto, things seem to be working fine. Now, it's quite unlikely that some computers Lynx games are going to be supported for controllers. That's why we've got Create Pad to Key Profile. So in other words, some games, if not all the games, because I'm not too familiar with this microcomputer, uh, most games will likely work from keyboard. So what we can actually do with Create Pad to Key Profile is actually map out keys 
for your controller. So let's open up O oh Mummy first. Okay, so for this particular game, it does allow us to play a joystick. So obviously, I'm going to need to type in J for this. And then for this particular game, level of play, uh, I'm going to put this on 1 because most of these old school 8-bit marker games are solid. And speed of play, to be honest, I've never actually played Oh Mummy, but we're going to do 2. Okay, so as you've seen just then, I set up my controller, it said joystick, but it's not going to work. So the best course of action here, I think, for this particular game is just setting up a pad to key profile. So if I hold down the A button for this game specifically, create pad to key profile. And what I need to do next then is actually find out the exact controls, the keyboard controls, in order to map it through this. So what I need to do then is actually go back into the game for this and I'm going to attempt to find out the actual keyboard controls. Okay, so as we can see, by going to keyboard, we can see that up is A, down is Z, and left is hyphen, and right is and. So make a mental note of that. What I'm going to do is attempt to set this up through pad to key. So if I just exit out of the emulator itself. So I'm going to attempt to configure this game. So I'm going to press A on my Xbox controller. Hold it down for a few seconds. And I'm going to go to create pad to key profile. So the first button I'm going to map just there is the up button. And the instructions for the game said that needs to be the A button which does that. So if I press D-pad up, I'm going to go to A, and that's now set up. The next key we got is Z, which goes down. So I'm going to open this up and select Z. And the left key is actually represented as either hyphen or minus. And we got D-pad right, so if I open up this one, this is the AND key. Okay, so that would be fine for now. So what I'm going to do then is actually go right to the bottom just here and go to save. And technically, if I open up this game again, I should be able to now control it with my Xbox controller. Okay, so I just went into options for this game by pressing the O key. And obviously, I'm going to want to choose keyboard for this. And change your control keys. I'm going to type no because I've just set this up for my Xbox controller. Okay, so like I said, I've never played O Mummy before, but I clearly have no idea how to play that game. But at least we got Xbox controller input for this. So it's very unlikely, but as we know, I don't have any artwork for these new games. So what I'm going to do is hold down the A button on my Xbox controller, and I'm going to go down to Scrape. And by doing this, what this is now doing is looking for artwork which matches the name of this game. Like I say, it's very unlikely anything for this particular game is going to come up because most homebrew modern day games where all platforms don't have much in terms of artwork. But anyways, that's just a simple way of checking things out. If I press my select button, advanced system options, decorations, we can try to apply a decoration here. We got some arcade vertical decorations. We got an animated decoration here, uh, ambience vintage TV. If I select this one and go into the game, Now that game didn't seem to boot just then, so what we could possibly do is go to advanced system options, down to emulation, model to emulate, and as we see just here, by auto, this game is going to be using Lynx 48k version, but maybe this game requires 96k of RAM, so let's open it up with this.
And here we go then. So some games are going to need you to configure the correct model of computer's links. Now thankfully the controls for this particular game aren't that too awkward so for this I'm controlling the sprite on screen with my page up page down in home and end arrow keys. But of course you can actually map this out through the pad to key like I did just a minute ago with Oh Mummy. Okay, so just remember if you've got games that might require 96k of RAM or some which requires 48k of RAM, just remember if you hold down your A button, you can actually set this up per game. So this game, for example, if I go down to advanced game options, emulation, I can then set this every time to run with Lynx 96k. And finally, we got the Haunted game. So again, I'm not sure if this is going to be a 48k game or a 96k. And this appears to be working fine with 96k. So oddly enough, we've got another almost dungeon crawler. And if you're familiar with the game Tenebra, which is a fairly new game for many different uh, vintage platforms, then yeah, it kind of looks familiar, I guess. Anyways, that's it for today's RetroBat and Computers Link setup guide for Windows PC. So if you're new to my channel, just remember I've got an entire two playlists for RetroBat. I've got a help playlist as well as a general setup guide per system playlist. I also cover many different front ends and standalone emulators. Anyways, hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like today's video. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Also check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.